Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Reflective Resume Thursday. We're very glad you're with us today. It is November 3rd, 2022. Please note this event has been recorded. It's currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, you give consent for your name and picture to appear. Please note that any comments you put in the Zoom chat window will not appear in the recording. For those people who are watching us on Zoom, if you'd like to put any questions you have, just put them into the chat window. You're also welcome to put in your contact information so you can connect with other people who are on the call today and expand your LinkedIn connections. For those watching on Facebook, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please just put your questions in the comment field. We're monitoring that feed and we'll be sure to get those questions answered for you. We are going to re we will have time at the end of this presentation to review one or two resumes live today. You can submit your resume using the chat box for those on Zoom, uh, but I'd ask that you please delete your header information because it will be on Facebook and YouTube as long as electrons keep floating around this universe. So uh, all you need to do is open up the uh, just click on instead of everyone send it to Jeff Morse host. And uh, you can just attach your file by where that blue arrow is, go back and look for it. That would be great if you want to do that. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2008, I started a website called careerdfw.org, a website to help those who are unemployed in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In 2012, 10 years ago, I started a second website, careerusa.org, to help those around the United States. I have written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search You May Not Know. It is available on Amazon, or you can, if you ever see me, you can always, I always have copies with me. Since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. I'll tell you about our upcoming program tomorrow that we're having tomorrow morning at the end of this session. And since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team. Remember, your resume, your LinkedIn profile is not going to get you a job. What it gets you is a phone call. How well you practice your interviewing skills, that's what's going to get you your next job. So just reach out to dallaspitcrew.com and you can get more information there about how to sign up. All right, our agenda today, we're going to talk about the ATS system, about a one-page bio, about a master resume, uh, the key components of a resume, and then if anybody wants us to look at their your resume, we'll be glad to do that online. So let me switch presentations here. All right. So first thing I want to do is I want to talk a little about some basic resume writing rules that will put you ahead of the competition. This is by Judy Porzitz manager and career coach uh, at Career Connect at the Muse, and it's a website for career research. So number one, avoid spelling or grammatical errors. I mean, you know, this really needs to go without saying. You got to think about this. A recruiter has 100, 200 resumes to go through via on a computer. They don't print them out anymore, but on a computer. What are they doing? They're trying to find a reason to cut you out so they can get down to 10 or 15 resumes that they'll then look at a little bit longer. So if you have a spelling mistake or grammatical error, it's going to get you thrown out right away. Be sure to watch your tenses. We'll talk more about this in a little bit about, you know, present tense and past tense. Because if you used to do, if you, you know, have a job that you worked at years ago, you got to make sure the tenses are past tense. Remember, they're looking for a reason to kick you out of the group. Be sure to send your resume as a PDF. Now, why do that? The reason you want to send your resume as a PDF file is because that won't change. We did an experiment back in the North Dallas group several years ago, and I had like everybody sent me their resume, and I had like 30 resumes to look at. The only three resumes that came up when we popped them up on the screen for everybody to see them, the only three that looked correct were the three that were sent as a PDF because my printer is different than your printer. Everybody's printer will cause the formatting to be a little bit different if you stay in Microsoft Word or uh, Apple Pages. So just be aware that when you send it as a PDF file, it will look exactly like you send it. 
Be sure it's easy to read. And what we mean is no big clumps of text. I mean, you know, a couple, you know, your bullet points, no more than two lines, one line if you can, two lines max. Uh, no big, nothing more than three or four lines together. Uh, you, you want to have white space. You want the text to be easy to read. So please, please, please. Well, like I said, we'll go into more details about all these points here in just a few minutes. Number five, you want to quantify as much as po possible. Every bullet point on your resume needs to be quantified or it, it's got to show some statistics. This is the amount of dollars I saved. This is the amount of increase in productivity. Uh, this is just give me some reference to tell me what it is you did so I know how good you are. If your resume reads like a job description, I'm not going to read it because it doesn't tell me what you, this tells me what you were supposed to do, but it doesn't tell me what you could be doing for me. Okay, number six, name drop and title drop. You've got to be careful that your names and your titles uh, all fit and are all correct and are all standard job titles. Uh, you want to make sure to use your judgment when, when, when it comes to being, create, being creative. Your, res you, your resume needs to be in a pretty standard format because that's what recruiters are used to seeing. My daughter, I tell this story all the time, my daughter is a UX designer, meaning she designs websites. You know, she works for a company and she's responsible for several pages on their website. And everything that they do, they've got to follow some guidelines. So when she was uh, laid off from IBM a couple of years ago, along with 25,000 other people at one point, uh, she, you know, she went and did her resume and she sent it to dad and dad wanted to see what it looked like, me, I wanted to see what it looked like. Uh, and it had yellow triangles and blue squares and red circles on it. And I go, Alex, you can't do this. If people don't want to see that. They want to see it. Oh, dad, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, no kid thinks their dad knows what they're talking about. Their parents know. Well, luckily, IBM paid right management to work have career coaches for all these people who were laid off. Alex took use of it. And guess what her resume looked like after she got done dealing with right management? A lot like what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, don't list everything you've done. You know, you could, and we'll talk about a master resume in a few minutes. You know, you remember your resume is just a hook. It's just there to get them to call you up on the phone. So, Tell them what they need to know that's relevant to the job description. I'm sure everybody here has done a lot of really, really great things, but if it's not part of the job description, just move on. I mean, get on to something else because it will make a big difference. It'll be a lot easier to do that with. Uh, number nine, think about the person reading your resume. And what we mean here is that is a very good chance that in the uh, HR department, They've hired some 22, 23-year-old college graduate, just graduated from college, doesn't really technically know what they're hiring for, but they get in a job description, and they say, find me 10 or 15 people who fill this bill. So if you don't make it easy for the recruiter to go, yes, this person does what we're looking for, there's a good chance that you're, you're not going to be selected because they're not going to understand some of the things. So like we said, if it's not in the job description, you know, make sure you talk about it just like the job description does. And then be sure to think about specific jobs that you're applying to. You know, is it really something that you really, really want to do? Is this really the job for me? Is this the details? Now you do have to remember, you know, there's some speakers who say, oh, if it's not, if you don't match 80 to 90% of the job description, don't apply. There are other people who say, if it matches 50% of the job description, apply. And the reason being is that a lot of times companies have a catalog of job descriptions on a, on a, in a binder in the HR department. And they go and they open up the binder and go, yep, this one sort of fits. Uh, this is the right pay scale and the right job title. Yeah, it may not be everything we want them to do, but we'll just post this job out there. So you got to sort of just sort of weigh the difference between you know, is this, am I really a good match or, and is this really a company I want to work for? Okay, so what I want to do first is we're going to talk about the resume versus the one page bio. 
when you send a resume out to people, you're saying, hire me, hire me, help me, help me, I'm looking for a job. When you send out a one page bio, you can use this for networking, for informational interviews, for if you're speaking at a, at a meeting or a conference. Um, it's a more generic document to tell somebody who you are, what you've done, and a few highlights of what you've done. You know, your resume focuses on work history detail. Your bio focuses on major accomplishments. The resume is strictly a job hunting tool. A bio is a multi-purpose tool. So, you know, it's, it's much more easier. So let's take a look at a bio here real quickly. So here's, I've got two bios to show you. This one is vertical. Uh, you put your picture on a bio. You never put your picture on a resume, but on a bio you do. Uh, you can see there a, a quick little paragraph of who this person is, their professional biography, jobs they had, and the companies they were at, their educations down the lower left-hand corner. The upper right-hand corner has contact information, uh, how you can reach out to somebody. You sort of want that next to your picture. It makes sense. And then some professional achievements down the right-hand side, some big things that you've done. And it just sort of gives somebody a frame of reference. This is a great networking tool. If you're gonna meet somebody at, at uh, Starbucks or something, you send this to them beforehand, and this is a way for them to number one, know what you look like and have an idea of who you are. This is a second uh, resume, and this is also known for a second job description. Um, so they can be vertical. I mean, they, get, they can be horizontal, they can be vertical, whatever you wanna do. Same kind of thing, competencies, analytical thinking, you know, sort of marking out what this person does, some professional achievements, their areas of expertise, uh, professional biography, listing the companies this person's worked at. The difference here is though, this one has target functions, which I think is a good idea because you want people to know what kind of job titles you're focusing on. And then the thing you need to be careful about is this next section, lower right-hand corner, target companies. Now, the hard thing about a target company is that when you send in this out to prospective employers, if you're looking for informational interviews, make sure the company you send this to, they're listed as the first bullet point on here. Uh, this gentleman who wrote this profession, who wrote this one said, yeah, I really screwed up when I first sent this out. Uh, I sent this out to a prospect or to a, you know, for an information interview. And the guy says, well, you don't even have my company listed here. Are you sure you even want to work here? So personally, I probably wouldn't want to list target companies unless you're just sending this to friends and family. Okay. If that's what you're doing, but if you're sending this to a, uh, somebody who's employed, I'm not sure I'd want to send that out uh, with target companies listed. Let me go, I'm gonna put a couple of documents in the uh, chat window right now. I'm gonna put both of these in there. Let's see here. Uh... Okay, so I just put both of those in there. You can download those a little bit later uh, if you'd like to get them. I and if you can't download them, I'll give you an email address you can send and I'll be glad to get these to you. All right, uh, there's a great book out there and I love this book, it's called Be Sharp. It's by Minna Brown and Paula Asinoff and she talks, and the book's called Be Sharp, be sure to get the second edition. The first half of the book talks all about how to introduce yourself. The second half of the book, they've really expanded in the second edition and they talk about the one page bio. And you can see Minna Brown's bio here. She's an executive coach and author and public speaker. Uh, she trains people on how to be a coach and stuff. So this is more of an ad slick for her because it's very colorful and, and got some different things on it. But in the back of the book, if you're interested, you find it on Amazon for like 17 bucks. And if you have Amazon Prime, you may be able to download it on a Kindle for free. I know at one point it was a free book you could download. So consider looking at uh, a one-page bio. You can go out on Google. You can just type in one-page bios. There's lots of them out there, whatever fits your bill. I think it's a really effective networking tool. This is what you want to do. I've heard you don't want to send your resume out until you know what the person's really looking for. When they tell you, well, just send me your resume. No, I'd send, them, I'd send this one-page bio 
and say, I'd love to send your resume as soon as we can sort of talk about, it. I'd love to find out what it is you're really looking for so I can customize my resume to fit what you're looking for. All right, a master resume. Uh, a master resume could be 10, 15, 20 pages long, depending how long you've been in the workforce and how many different jobs you've had. What you do here is you make one resume that has everything you've ever done. Uh, you can include uh, internships in college. You can include any kind of job on there. You put addresses, you put managers' names, you put eight or 10 or 15 bullet points and successes that you've had at each one of those jobs. The nice thing about this is once you've done this, when you see a job description, it makes it really easy that you can go save this as, whatever your naming convention is to save documents, and you can eliminate everything that's not in the job description. All right, be sure to list all your areas of expertise, any certifications you have, any software skills, because if it's important, if it's a software program used 15 years ago, some companies may still be using that. So, you know, this is a great way to, once you do it, you never have to think about, wait, did I, didn't I do this? 15 years ago, 20 years ago, I think I've done the same kind of thing. So I think a master resume is an extremely effective tool. All right, so let's uh, talk about a few characteristics of good resumes. The goal is to make the ATS system and screeners make it easy for them to know that you're a good match for the job, okay? So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure the format's easy to read and that it's formatted in the standard that most recruiters are used to seeing. They're not used to seeing functional resumes. They want to see a chronological resume, which is what we're going to talk about. What's the overall length? A resume can be two or three. I think if you're a recent graduate or only had one or two jobs, you can get it on one page. But if you've worked you know, more than 10 years, whatever, uh, two pages. And if needed, you could go to a third page. Remember, most resumes are no longer printed out anymore. So on the computer, on a when you when they look at it on a the computer, they see a page break, but it doesn't really register them. This is page two, this is page three. But once again, if they're not asking for it in the job description, don't put it in the resume. And then the third thing we need to talk about is the number of years. How many years do you put on a resume? All right, some people say only 10 to 15 years. Somebody, they put it all on there. It really sort of depends. So here's three different options. Number one, you can show all of your experience, put everything on there. Number two, you can just show the most recent 10 to 15 years of experience. Or number three, the most recent 10 to 15 years and a section called prior relevant experience. So in the chat box, if you will, put a, a B or C and let me know what you think the correct answer is. And there's no incorrect answer here. What's your opinion? For those watching on Facebook, you can put it in the uh, comment field. Let me know. A, B, or C. All right. Well, it looks like most everybody's picked B and C. Um, like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. Here's the reason I like C. All right, A is fine. I mean, you know, if you really know who you're applying with and they know you personally, yeah, you could put it all on there because that's they're not going to kick you out because of that. Uh, but I like C, and the reason being is that if you want to go and tell a star story from something you did at a prior job that's not on your resume. If you don't put down a section called prior relevant experience, you don't have permission to talk about those things. Because what will happen is if you do, the recruiter or the hiring person is going to look at you and go, well, wait, I don't see that job on this. You know, where did you do that at? I don't see that on your resume. So then they're going to go, well, what else are you hiding? OK, they're going to think to themselves. So I like C personally. We've all done prior relevant experiences. And all you do is you list the company name and the job title, no dates. But when you do that, you're then able to tell a star story from something where, you know, if something comes up, you can tell something like that. Okay, what kind of fonts do you want to use in your resume? You want to keep it simple. Personally, I like Arial, Calibri, Tacoma, and Helvetica. I like those plain non-serif fonts. 
Times New Roman, Garamond, Calibri, or uh, Cambria. I don't like the little curly cues that they put at the end of those sections. I just think that it's not as, uh, it, it makes it harder to read. You know, something like Calibri is a very clean font. You want to keep the fonts 10 to 12 point. Uh, no eight point fonts, no nine point fonts. You know, my resume is three pages. I'm trying to get it down to two. I'm going to just make it a font size smaller. Don't do that. Eliminate things that are not on the job description. For margins, you generally want one inch left, right, top, and bottom, okay? Because you want to leave them some room if they do print it out and if they have this in an interview that they can sit there and write some notes on. Now, of course, when you go in for an interview, you are going to print off copies of your resume, clean copies to take with you that are easy to read. Okay, you're always going to take some of those with you. Uh, be very careful with bullets. You really, I know, I'm bolding, you can use a little bit. I'm not a big fan of underlining. I don't like italicize any shadows and no graphics. I just don't think those work. You want to keep it simple. Uh, you know, the bullets like you see here, the little round dots, those are fine. I'm not a big fan of check marks or uh, little houses or anything else. Just, just keep it. Keep it simple because uh, you never know. You got to remember, I'm, so I'm primarily talking about an ATS system, the applicant tracking system, but even standard resumes make it easy and clean for somebody to read. Be sure you do not use any text boxes, no headers or footers, and no templates. You know, a lot of times people will just open up Microsoft Office, they'll open up a resume template, they'll start flinging information. The problem with that is a lot of the ATS systems and there's well over 100 different ATS systems out there, they can't handle text boxes. They can't handle the header section. So you may have a great resume, and if you submit it with a, in your contact information in the header, they're not going to know who you are. They won't be able to see because it, it won't pop up on their system, won't handle it. So everything has to be in the body of your resume. How do you fill a gap? on a resume. Some people have gaps. Maybe you haven't worked in two years since COVID hit. Maybe you took off time to take care of a, uh, a loved one, you know, a parent who has been sick or something. So you can add a bullet point, right? You know, a thing, a job title, maybe called continuing uh, community leadership, consulting, um, continuing education, and then talk, you know, put a couple bullet points saying what it is you've done. You know, even if you didn't get paid to do it, if you're volunteering for an organization, you can probably work something in. If you were taking care of a loved one, put down, you know, caregiver for a loved one, a uh, situation is taken care of. You wanna make sure that whenever you do those kinds of things or you took off because of a health issue or whatever, that uh, it, it's no longer an issue, that you're, you're not being pulled. Because if you don't do that, if they don't throw your resume out, they're going to ask you an interview, well, are you still having to deal with this? Is this still an issue? So you want to make sure you let them know that the situation has been resolved or there's whatever has happened. So here's, a, here's an example. This is on a resume here, Community Leadership and Consulting 2019 to present. This was actually done a couple of years ago. You know, served as a panelist and a coach for the Dallas Practice Interview Team to help job seekers with their interviewing skills provide consulting services to a local nonprofit organization on how to prepare and conduct job interviews and how to evaluate candidates. Now, this happened to be for a local church. Well, she didn't want to put down the church's name or let them know that there's a relig religious organization. So you can just say a local nonprofit. That way you're keeping it more generic and, oh, you're helping nonprofits. That's a really great thing to do. So there's different ways you can do that. All right, so let's talk about the key components of a resume. Number one, you have to have a header. The header is your name, address, phone number. We'll look at that in just a second. A quick little summary, why you're qualified to do the job that they're asking for. Some key accomplishments. Now, this is only if you're truly in sales, and we're not talking about the generic, you know, everybody's in sales because you're looking for a job. But if you're a salesperson, we, usually it's nice to see a couple sales accomplishments right up top. But you also need to put it down with the job so we know where you did it at, uh, what's there. Your professional experience, some previous relevant experience, and that's an optional field, but I highly recommend that if you've been in, if you've been working more than 15, 20 years, because it gives you permission to talk about those things. 
Uh, we'll talk about you need an education section and a software skills. Education and software skills should go at the bottom unless if you just got your MBA or you just graduated, you could put your education at the very top before professional experience. If you have, if you're a technical, technical person, you may have, you know, a, a programmer or something like that. You could probably put some of your technical software skills up at the very top so people will be able to see that. But I'll point that out here in just a second. So in the header, be sure to use the name you want to be called, okay? Not your legal name. You know, if you go, you know, my name is Jeff, my name, legal name is Jeffrey Morris, but I go by Jeff Morris. So I'm going to always put down Jeff Morris because that's what I want it to be. If your name is hard to pronounce, in parentheses after your name, put the phonetic spelling of your name. Make it easy for the recruiter to go, boy, that's a hard name. Oh, look, they put on here how to say it. Okay, I'm not going to just, it, it just makes it a little bit easier. Make it easy for somebody. You want your phone number, city, state, and zip. You do not need your local address where you're at. We just need a city, state, and zip. Over on the right-hand side, your email address and your LinkedIn address. Now, both of those should not be hyperlinks. So when you type it in, Microsoft Word is going to make it a hyperlink automatically. Do a right-click on it, and you can put on there, remove hyperlink. The reason for it is some ATS systems don't like hyperlinks because they don't like that line underneath there. Make it easy for as many people to do it. If somebody wants to do it, if somebody wants to do it, they can highlight it, capture it, and then transfer it over into uh, uh, e either an email or a LinkedIn account if need be. So that's what you want for the very beginning of the, in the header information. Summary profile. So the summary is not an objective. It's not what you want to do. Your summary statement is what you've done and can help them, help them. You're a problem solver. I want to know what kind of problems you solve because I need somebody who can do what you do. So I'm going to put that on there. The title of the job, business analyst, should come off the job description. Okay. Now, if you've been a business analyst and you're applying for a business analyst job, that's fine. If you've not been a business analyst before, you probably want to put something a little bit different on there, but something close to let people know that this is, you know, the kind of position you're looking for. Under areas of expertise, I say no more than nine. Now, this is not a table. This is agile methodologies, tab, tab, scrum, tab, 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 requirement gatherings. Okay. So there's no table here but this is easy for, for the ATS system to be able to pull these areas of expertise. These areas of expertise come from the job description, okay? Now, if you're gonna, if I interview you, I'm gonna ask you a question. Tell me what your top three uh, areas of expertise are. You better not tell me improving processes, developing test plans and customer facing roles. It better be the top three on the list or the three over here on the left-hand side. So make sure your top three things that you do are in one of those two positions. The other four that are there or the rest of them are just there to sort of fill the space. If you just want to put six, you can list six. I wouldn't go more than nine. I've seen some people do 12, 15. That's too many. People don't read even, you know, let me go back to the summary statement up here. Uh, no more than three lines because people don't read novels, they scan it. So you wanna make it easy. Uh, if you notice this thing started out with an action verb, very important, innovative business analyst. So you're it's making them a little excited as far as what it is you do. We talked about key accomplishments if you're in sales. You can mention something. Once again, this is gonna have some really hard data. You achieved 120% of a $1.5 million sales target, exceeded a million dollar sales, recognized as top salesperson, you know, putting those on there. But these bullet points need to also be underneath the job that ha they happened in, okay? This is just getting somebody excited if you're in sales. Okay, your professional experience. Number one, it's gotta be chronological. Your resume needs to start out with the most current job on top and then the one before that below it and just keep going down the line. You've got to use parallel verbs. We talked about this using proper tenses. 
Okay. So everything that's underlined in red is current. Analyze, ensure, ensure, serve. Those are current tense because that's a present job that this person's had. Now they happen to have a past tense there. They achieved, achieved a 50% improvement. So this could have been a task that they did while there over the last you know, 10 years. Uh, so it's okay to have current, present, and past tense there. But in a past job, you want to make sure that everything is past tense, engaged, translated, reduced, facilitated, saved. You've got to make sure that all those things are past tense. Uh, you include a one-line description of the company. Listen, even though, yes, I know what IBM does and I know what uh, you know, uh, Marriott Corporation does, whatever, add a one-line sentence as far as what this company is, a Fortune 500 software company or whatever it is, because there are millions of companies out there. Listen, I've been doing this for 14 plus years now, and there's not a Friday that goes back, goes by in my Friday group where somebody will mention a company and I'll go, I've never heard of that company. Who are they? You know, so uh, put that one line on your resume. It helps give a little bit of clarification. One of the things that I've also done on my personal resume, I had a one line description, or I had a little comment, you know, that who I reported to. I reported to the owner, I reported to the vice president of operations, I reported to the CEO. I think that also helps by giving uh, some relevancy as far as where you fit in the organization. And you can also say, you know, I reported to the owner of the company and I supervised 45 employees or six direct reports, whatever that is, just to give a little bit of relevance as far as what it is you've done. You want to limit the number of bullet points per job. You don't want to have too many. I think five to six is enough. Uh, and the farther back you go, you're going to have fewer and fewer bullet points. But remember, every bullet point you talk about should be relevant to what's in the job description. And then lastly, you've got to make sure you focus on results. Very important. I want to see details. I want to know what you did and what you can do to help me if I'm going to hire you. So in the professional experience and details, you want to limit it to five to six bullet points. Bullets have to focus on results, and they should not sound like a job description. Okay, I see resumes all the time, and it's a job description. Then it tells me what you were supposed to do, but it doesn't tell me what you succeeded in doing. And I need to know what you what you were able to accomplish. So one of the things we like to play is we play this game called the so what game. If you have done a bunch of, uh, if you have, you know, read your bullet point on your resume, read the bullet point, at the end of it say, so what? And if you can't answer the so what, what was the result was, that's something you need to do. So here's an original text, guided the next phase of brand development for a multimedia artist and managed film production and publishing. So what? Well, we asked the question and the person said, oh, well, this increased the business opportunities, which led to 10 new commissions for my client. Oh, okay, so you've, by doing what you did, here was the result. So we rewrote the bullet point to say, increased business opportunities to include 10 new commissions for my client based on developing a full social media and PR strategy. So this tells me what it is you've done and what you can maybe do for me. All right, what happens if you've had multiple roles at one company, okay? What you want to be sure is you want to list the company name once at the very top. So you see company B, city, state, 2010 to 2014. So what you're going to do is that's going to be right justified. Then for each of the roles that you've had, business analyst, you're going to put those dates next to, in parentheses, next to the job title. Now, if you were to put those job those dates all right justified, it could make you look like a job hopper. But by doing it this way, this allows me may allows a recruiter or anybody looking at your resume to go, okay, they had multiple roles in one job. I worked for a company for 13 years and had six different jobs while I was there. So you know I had the one main one listed, and then I have by each job title when I was there. What happens about companies that change, change names? This happens all the time. Companies are always changing names. 
So you have a couple options here. Number one, you can give the current name of the company followed by the old name. So XYZ Corporation, formerly ABC Company. Or you can give the old company name first with the date of the MNA, ABC Company acquired by XYZ Company in 2008, whatever it is. There was a gentleman who used to be part of these calls years ago. He worked for, well, he worked for a company I had never heard of. He said, oh yeah, well that company was acquired by, you know, the, the name before that it was this. I hadn't heard of that one either. Well, before that it was Campbell Soup. Campbell Soup sold us, sold our division to company A, which then sold to company B. You know, so I advise us, we all know what Campbell Soup is. You list Campbell Soup and then you put down acquired by whatever the name of the company is in that date because that's the name brand. Everybody's got these little names that we never heard of before. Pick the name brand. That's the important thing. That's what's going to get you in the door. All right, under uh, education and software skills, you want to list your uh, major, your, the degree you have with the major name, the school, name of the school, city, state. And then underneath that, for any software skills, you're going to list whatever the software skills are. Now, if you're an admin, you probably do want to list Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint. If you're a CEO or a CFO, you don't really need to list Microsoft Word or Excel because you're probably using Excel. Uh, you may want to add pivot tables. You may want to add other little technical terms that you're using. Uh, but the key here is if they ask for it in the, re in the job description, put it in the resume. So if it's in the job description, put it in the resume. If you don't have a degree, you want to write something like this, name of the school, city, state, dash, whatever the major area of concentration is, and then put it in parentheses how many hours you've got. Or you can say expected graduation date, uh, spring of 2023. Just so you know, we have an idea. Don't lie about what you've got. Remember there was a coach at Notre Dame who said he had a degree in something. And of course, two months, a month after they hired him, they found out he didn't have that degree. He was gone. So you know, tell the truth here. All right, so now what we're gonna talk about a little bit is about aligning a resume to a job description. Okay, it's very, very important. You know, take a second and look at that job description. Grab a yellow highlighter, mark up on the job description what's important. And then once you do that, then look at your resume and say, do I have those same things on there? So a few things I wanna do is I'm gonna mention, all right, they're looking for a business analyst. Well, I'm gonna make sure the title of my resume says business analyst. I'm gonna make sure that's in my innovative business analyst in my summary statement, right there at the very, very beginning. They're looking for somebody who can handle uh, documentation of business requirements. So I'm gonna make sure I mention that in my profile. Uh, somebody who can improve processes. Someone who can do cross-functional things. I'm gonna make sure that's in there. I'm going to mention Agile, Scrum, Visual Studio. I'm going to make sure those are my, in my areas of expertise, and I'll be able to list them down in my software skills. I want to list multiple sources, uh, user manuals, making sure that all this stuff is in here, because you want to make it easy for those important things to copy over and make sure those things are, you know, that's what should be on your resume. It takes a little bit of time. You just can't have a generic resume and just fire it out every time you see a job because if you don't customize it, you have less than a 2% chance of getting that phone call. You want somebody to want to reach out to you because you match. So just remember, keywords are very, very important. Resumes are scanned. They are not read. The average resume is read by a recruiter in 7.2 or 7.6 seconds. They're scanning through stuff. Now, once they've got 10 or 15 in the good pile, they'll then go back and read the resume in more detail to see who are the five or six people that I want to talk to. But to get past that first round, it is a quick little summary. A resume will not get you a job, it only gets you a phone call. I think I mentioned that before. So you've got to practice your interviewing skills. Very, very important. And I think one of the most important things when you get that phone call, you need to ask them, hey, thanks for calling. So what was it about my LinkedIn profile? What was it about my resume that made you pick up the phone and call me? Because now you know what's important. 
It could be something you had on page two, at the very last job you had listed. You had some sentence or some word down there that you used. And they went, I want to know more about this. So we need somebody who can has that skill. So ask them why. Don't just assume they're calling you because or whatever. Ask why. Very, very, very important. All right. Uh, well, nobody has submitted a resume as far as I can tell. Let me, a couple of things I want to do. Um, let me include, let me include a couple of documents here. Let me include the sample resume. So here's the sample resume that we just shared. I also want to include some action verbs. Here's 185 action word, verbs that you can add to your resume to spice it up a little bit and make it look really good. And then here's also an article about resume tips on what to do during COVID. So all those things are right here in the chat box. Um, let me stop that. I'll stop my sharing. If anybody has any questions, you're welcome to ask away. Uh, we can take questions for a little bit. If not, I'll finish things up. Anybody have any questions? Jeff, are you familiar with the job scan um, app or whatever it is that 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 online? Yes, yes it's called jobscan.co. Yes. That's CO, not COM. Uh, you know, the good thing about it is it does a pretty good job of matching your job description to a resume. Now, make sure that when you copy the job description in there, that you only copy in the, uh, the main part of the resume. Because if you were to go and copy in uh, all that little stuff like, you know, 401k and health insurance, and mm -hmm. you'll see, you're never going to match that because that's not going to be in your resume. So just put in the body of your resume in with the body of your job description or job description and resume. Put those two things together. Uh, you're never going to be in the 90 percent. You're never going to hit 100 percent. You know, but if you can get 70, 80 percent, I think that's pretty good. Now, jobscan.co, if I understand right, they give you five free times per month. The way around that is if you have uh, if you have more than one operating system on your, not operating system, you have one more than one web browser, Chrome, Bing, uh, Firefox, you now can do five on each one of them. And okay. if you go and clear your cache, you'll then be able to get five more. If you go in and figure out how to clear your cache on whatever operating system you're using or whatever web browser you're using, you would be able to get more of them. So, uh, uh, yes, let's see here. Could address resume? Uh, oh, could you address? Could you, uh, well, first of all, Lori, yes, I'll be glad to your, look at your resume if you want. Uh, do me before before you send it to me. All you're gonna do is in the chat window, click on that little piece of paper next to the face, and you can send it to me. Uh, but before you do that, delete your header information so it doesn't show up everywhere on Amazon or you know on YouTube and, and uh, Zoom everywhere. Um, so let's see, wait, let me back here. Career changes. Could you address resumes for career changes? Most likely, I'm going to say this, most likely your resume is not going to get you a job if you're trying to change careers. What you need to do is you need to do information interviews. You need to have a one-page bio and you need to network your way into a company. You need somebody to go, we need somebody who has your skills. I mean, you know, you could be a teacher and you wanna get into, um, I don't know, project management. Well, teachers and project management, I mean, teachers, they have to put together a lesson plan every day. They have to grade things. They have to evaluate what they're doing. So what you need to do is you need to find a project manager and have them help you reword your resume to match the, the words that get used as a project manager. So uh, it's a lot harder. You just can't say I was a teacher and now I wanna be in healthcare. You've got to get the, get the wording that they use in healthcare and make sure that you pull, uh, that you, know, you turn the, the things that you did, uh, you know, yeah, you had to give runny noses and all those kinds of things to the kids or you, you, know, you sent them to the nurse. Uh, you want to make sure you talk about those things and uh, 
you know, you can reword them if you work for it. But the best, the only way you're going to get in, your resume is never going to get you in changing fields. But if you can get somebody to help, you know, pull you into the organization, that's what's going to work. Uh, let's see here. I just got a master's in a new field, so I know the lingo. Okay, so if you got a master's in a brand new field, you know the lingo, that's great. How to change what you've done into their lingo makes all the difference. Uh, Lori, were you able to figure out how to tap? Right here it came. All right, hold on just one second. Let me download it. And I'll open your resume. Here we go. I'll share it here so everybody can see it. Let's see here. Where do we go? Share screen. All right. So now everybody should be able to see, uh, see her, Lori's information. Let me close this down so I can see everything. Uh, Executive Leader Program Development Association Management. Uh, if for this is your master resume, that's fine, but you only want one job title when you're applying for a job, okay? So make sure that you put down whatever the job title is that you're applying for, okay? You don't want to sit, because you don't want to be the, you know, you need to be a, you want to be, what's the term? Uh, if you're a master of everything, you're not a master of any one particular thing, and that's really tough. Um, strategic visionary executive leaders like engaging programs, blah 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 blah. You want to get this down to three lines, okay? Because it's tough. Anything more than three lines, just evaluate what it is. Once again, it's fine to have something big, but then when you find apply for a job, cut down to what's important in the job description. It's very, very important to only talk about what's in the job description. Core competencies and achievement. Um, personally, I think I would just put down, I don't think I would list that line. I think I would just, I would just list the job titles. I would just list core competencies and just list, you know, you have to list down and achievements, but just list program and project meeting and manager, meeting management, planning and communication leadership and community development. List those as nine bullet points. All the words that are here afterwards, those are the kinds of things that need to be down in your job, in under your professional experience so we know what it is you've done. Uh, you gotta move this date here, over here, right justify it. Get all these dates, that date, this date needs to be right justified. Um, I like this, you add fully re remote work. That's really great because that tells somebody you can work remote or, um, and you can just put down remote. I don't think you have to say fully remote work, but I think by just putting remote, that works really, really well. Uh, Friday's at four. Now, what I wanna know is, I wanna know what Friday, what is this? Is this the name of, is this a company? You know, I mean, it's rapid business plan. Give me one line, just tell me what it is this company is. You know, is this a six million dollar a year company? Does this company just something that tells me who they are, so I have an idea, uh, and just to be able to get just give me a little bit of a basis of what's going on. Uh, conduct business analyst financial management tax return forecast, and I would go and say, so what? You did business analyst. What did you find? Financial management. So what? Tell me what was the result? You did tax review return review. Uh, did you find errors? Did you fix issues that you, you know to decrease what they had to pay for taxes? You know, you forecast optimal operations, increasing productivity by what? You know, give me, give me some. This is a this is reading like a job description. Here's what you were supposed to do. Doesn't tell me what you can do for me. Um, provide virtual, let's just keep moving down here. Um, all right, so once again here, I want a date. I want a date over here, right justified, that tells me 
how long you were there. I'm, I'm guessing you had a couple different roles there. Yeah. So you've got 2020, you see how far back it goes. So 2005, so I would put up here under Realtor 2005 to 2020. Let people know you're there for a long time. You don't need to have months. I don't think that's important. You need it on when you fill out a job application, but on a resume, just put down 2019 to 2020, uh, 2010 to 2018. That's all you have to do. Um, So here's the first result that I found in your resume. You drove 80,000 annual revenue. So every one of these things, you know, you, how many programs did you develop? Formulated training and education programs. How many programs? How many do you put on? Put, how many do you put on every year, every month? Uh, well, that that was something. actually up on top of my achievements. So maybe scrap all those competencies, all those achievements were up in the top. Yeah, because, because I, quite frankly, I'm not going to read core competencies. I'm going to go down. I want to. I want to know where you did it at because I'm going to want to. If we're having an interview, I'm going to go. Okay, well, you told me here at, uh, you know, at, uh, you know, Fridays at four that you did so and so, but I don't really see the results. If you put the results here now, I go. Tell me how you did this while you were there. Okay. You know that's why it's real, real important. It's fine to have you know, program, project, meeting, planner, this kind of stuff at the top. But I think it's real important to, in, in the data, this is the important part that people are going to look, professional experience, I think. We're going to want to see details. Uh, you don't necessarily need to put your name at the top of the second page anymore because when you send it as a PDF, it's not going to get lost. It's going to be right together. You could save the space a little bit if you want. You've got good margins. It looks like one-inch margins right, left. Uh, Bottom, I'm not quite sure about. Let's see here. Yeah, so here, here you're giving me some results. And this is what, this draws my attention. Think about this. Let's go back here and look here. When you see this paragraph here, my eyes are drawn to 80,000 because it's not A, B, C, D, E, F through Z. It stands out because it's something different. When we get down to here, oh, look at this. Drove 58% increase, generated 40,000, you rate $5,000. I want to I want to talk to you because you've done this and this is what I need somebody to do for me, okay? So it's yeah. by putting these you know dollars percent and numbers down there, it really helps uh, draw somebody's eye in there. Yeah. Um, put these dates in parentheses, like I said, and you can drop the months. Prior relevant experience, great. Um, you can or can't put you know I mean in this case you put a couple results. Perfect. That's fine to do. There's no problem doing that at all. Uh, but you don't have to. But just by listing, you know, Ford uh, Motor Credit Company, you have permission to talk about something if you have a star story that you can use in the job you're applying to. Education, professional development, great. Master of Science, perfect. You don't have to put dates on there. You put in the date of your, oh, this is just a certificate. I'm not sure you need to put that date on there. You know, if it was like you just got your MBA, that'd be a lot more important to me than just getting a certificate date wise. I mean, for me anyway, um, that's not going to change things. Quite frankly, what's up here in your work experience, that's what's going to get me to call you. Unless in my job description, you got to have a master's degree. You have to have a bachelor of arts or something. That's the only time I'm going to look down here just to make sure. Yep. Okay. Bachelor of arts. Perfect. You, you meet my minimum qualifications. Uh, volunteer engagement, that's great. If you want to do it, just be very, very careful that you, you know, you never know who you could offend, okay? So nothing, I always say nothing religious, nothing political, um, you know, um, but whatever, uh, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. So and cut out the Catholic um, charities because it's religious. You know, I and mean, that's fine. I mean, it's a large, the thing is, it's such a large worldwide organization. <clears throat> like everybody talks about it in the news. Right, right. Yeah, I, I would be, I'm okay with that because it's a big thing. You know, if it was just a local local church, I probably wouldn't list it on there. Uh, but as long as you've got a good star story, 
You know, yeah. so did you actually raise one million dollars? I mean, were you was that your role or were you on a team? That was our that, that was our team's goal, and I I contributed um, to a large part of that. Yeah. Okay. All right. As long as you have the star story, because you know, if I were to see that, I'm going to go. Oh yeah. Well, tell me about your fundraising. Tell me what you had to do. Yeah. You know, so as long as you've got a story ready to go, and then technical summary down here. Uh, Slack. Oh, let's see. Yeah, second page. You don't need to put a two at the bottom because I bet that's in the footer. It's not going to be in the header. It'll be in the footer information. You can delete that. If I can't figure out it's page two. You probably don't want me calling you. <laughs> um, and then you list it. Yeah, Excel with this is perfect. Excel with pivot charts. Perfect. Pivot, pivot, pivot charts or pivot tables. Um, what would the correct term be? Maybe it was tables. I'm, th I'm thinking it may be. You may want to check that and see uh, yeah. uh, what it is. Oh, Vanessa says, Lori and I worked in Chicago for 11 years. Let's connect. So Vanessa, be sure to, I mean, Lori, be sure to reach out to Vanessa or Vanessa, reach out to Lori. So please do that. Oh, uh, great. But yeah, this is great because you've mentioned the things that you've done. You've got this extra little hanging thing out here that I think I would delete because there's nothing after it. Okay. You know, you don't have one at the beginning, so you don't need one at the end. Right. But, you know, get your results that are up here and move them down here because this is what's going to tell me what it is you can do. I mean, that's what attracts me. That's what, as a recruiter, yeah, I need somebody who can handle a $1.1 million budget. I need somebody who can increase my revenues. I need somebody who can, you know, you know gets return rates uh, like yeah. this. So what I did was that used to be just all in the professional summary. And then they told me, put it at the top. So now I'm like just reversing what I had at the uh, original well, okay. time. So I'm just, every time I redo my resume, like someone tells me something different. So I'm not saying, I'm not laughing. I'm just like no. laughing out loud because this is a great experience. You know, like I, it's it's all good stuff, you know. So I had that embedded before. Now I'm unembedding it, you know. And it well, all right, so here, yeah, here's what you have to remember. If you ask 10 people, advice on your resume, you're going to get at least 12 or 15 different answers out of those 10 people. And then when you fix it for that person and you give it back to them, they're going to have more changes that you should make. So there is no right or wrong way. Here's the key. If you're getting people calling you up or if you're getting responses with your resume, it's working. That's the key. If you're not hearing anything and not getting any results, then you need to change things up, whatever that is. I am with just one opinion. I always thought to have a great way to have a fundraising event for Career DFW or CareerUSA.org is to get an MMA ring and get 10 resume experts and put them in the ring. And it's a knockdown drag out to come up with the perfect resume because everybody wants to see something a little bit different, how you should do it, what they think is right, what they think is wrong. Well, I'm, no. not 100, I'm not right. I just know that the basic formatting of dates and information that personally. Well, there was you know, one, there, there is one other tip. My recruiter that I found, she was great. She didn't get me the two jobs that she put me up for, but she said, take the keywords out of the job description. And then in each of your, she wiped out all those core competencies. And she said, put your, what's in the job description at the beginning of the bullet points. And if they're looking for program management, leadership development, you put that at the beginning of the bullet, you bold it, and then you give your mini star story. And that way you kind of give your, um, and she passed, I, I passed through, I went with flying colors. I thought I would get the jobs, but no, no, no. I mean, I was tortured for a month and not tortured, but it was, it was all good. But I mean, right. well, I, and that's is, the whole key. If a recruiter is willing to help you and tell you what they want, yeah, let them help you do whatever they say, because they're going to push it in their, in their group. And that's, what's important. Yeah. Um, you know, so, there's no right or wrong. You have to just feel comfortable with what it is you do. 
Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you so much. You're very, very welcome. All right. Um, let me just share a few more things. We will get out of here today because it's after two o'clock here. That's what we did. Let's see here. If you if you were not able to download the sample resume, the one cover, the T cover, I also have a T cover letter I can send you if you'd like. Uh, if you'd like to get any of those things, just send me an email at resume at careervfw.org. I'll get those information, I'll get those documents back to you. Just let me know what you're looking for, okay? Let me know that it's part of, you want the resume package and I'll get those things out to you. Let's see here. So uh, join careerdfw, careerusa.org. We're putting on training four days a week. Please join us tomorrow morning at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group meeting. We're gonna talk about open forum. We'll talk about whatever it is you wanna talk about. If you wanna talk about resumes, about interviewing, about problem people you've dealt with in the past, a tough interview question you've had, come bring your uh, questions tomorrow morning and we will get those answered for you. For those who live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we are now currently meeting in person. So we will be in person and online. So you're welcome to join us uh, tomorrow morning at 9.30 Central Time. Next Tuesday, I want to mention this, our LinkedIn Tuesday presentation is with Terry Sullivan. Uh, he's a marketing guru. He does presentations. He does 100 presentations a year just on LinkedIn for different companies. And he'll work one-on-one -on -one with clients, executives, as far as getting their LinkedIn profile up and going. He's going to talk about how to create a LinkedIn brand that tells your key contacts who you are, what you do, and how you can help. Please note this event will not be recorded. So if you want to watch the presentation, you do need to watch it live next Tuesday at 1 p.m. This session has been recorded. It will be on the Career DFW and Career USA uh, YouTube channel. On the Career USA YouTube channel, click on playlist. I have over 400 videos there. By clicking on playlist, uh, it cuts it down to seven different playlists. Pick the list you want: uh, resumes, interviewing, LinkedIn, and then down below where it says View Full Playlist. Click on that red arrow where the red arrow is. Up will come a list with the most current dates and topics and titles, and you can pick whichever uh, session you'd like to go back and watch. If this session will be up in a couple hours, it usually takes two to three hours for YouTube uh, to get it up there for us. If you're not receiving emails about our workshop and you'd like to join the Career USA mailing list, please send an email to Career USA, the plus sign subscribe at groups.io. You will not get spammed, but what you will get is the title of the day, the topic of the day, and most importantly, the Zoom link of the day. That way you can just click on the Zoom link and join us and not try to have to find it someplace. Please know Career at FW, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We have no full or part-time employees. Everything I've done over the last 14 years has just been to help you land your next great opportunity. I don't get paid to do this. It's just what I, this is me giving back to everybody out there. So thank you very much for joining us today. Have a great Thursday afternoon, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow morning. If not, we'll see you one day next week. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you.